Hey guys, welcome back to ECU Students' YouTube channel. We're so glad you're watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Today we're talking about media and technology. My name is Felicia and I get to be on the junior high team uh, with small groups and all of that. I would like to introduce our guests. Can you guys tell us your name, a little bit about yourselves, what your position is at the church and what your relationship is with like media and technology? For sure. I am Cami Sacchetti. You don't have to know the last name, you'll forget it in a second. Um, I am over at the Bloomington campus. I do all the kids programming from nursery through fifth grade. Um, and I'm in here staff on Monday, so I get to know all the staff who's here at normal campus as well. So it's really awesome. As far as my relationship with social media, I was thinking about this when I knew I was coming here today. Um, my first interaction with social media, I think was seventh grade, MySpace. Hmm. Ooh, oh yeah. I mean, it, don't be laughing. You know it was good. I mean, you got to pick a theme for your page. There was music involved. Way oh, more creative. The playlist was make or break. It was. You were judged hard on your playlist. Your play, but top eight. <laughs> oh, yes. back then you had to yes. choose who were your top eight friends. I mean, drama, drama, drama. So that was my first interaction, and those were the days of Elijah, let me tell you. Um, and then, I mean, you couldn't even have Facebook until you were in college at that point. Mm -hmm. You had to have a college um, yep. email back then. You so had to lie. You had to lie about You did. <laughs> it really started testing whether yep. or not you were truthful and who you really were. Uh, but yeah, those, those were good days. As far as social media now, I'm way more boring than I ever used to be. I'm 30, and I'm a mom of two, which is great, but I mean... We still struggle with social media even when we're old and boring, like myself. Um, it's still something that I'm thinking is here to stay, like we talked about before. It's something you're probably going to have to learn your whole life how you're going to deal with it. Um, for me, I've definitely gone through ups and downs as far as like this is becoming a complete crutch, this is becoming an escape for me to get away from the responsibilities that I have or something that I don't want to think about or do. Um, and it's just like an easy way for me to check out and I would justify doing Instagram or Facebook as just like, oh, I just need a break from the world. But really it was damaging for my life because as you all know, uh, five minutes on social media can easily turn into like mm. an hour. And afterwards, I never ever felt better. I always felt worse. I was like, I just wasted that much time and I feel no better about my life. In fact, most of the time I would feel worse because I was like, wow, I really need to do all of these other things that all these other people are doing. They're being successful and I'm a bum here on the couch eating Cheeto, Cheetos, Cheetos. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> I was like, Cheetos. I, if I was like, I don't know, I had a cool accent, but I don't. But either way, um, so I just had to learn that I had way more power within myself than I thought. And probably within really the last couple of years, um, learning when to just literally delete the app off my phone, um, almost sadly admitting that that's how weak I was to it, to think that I could just keep it there and I would be good enough to just only click on it for 10 minutes a day. And I realized I'm not that strong. And so once I realized that, I'm like, okay, well then I have to delete the app off my phone and for two weeks and those two weeks were usually the best two weeks of my life <laughs> like the weeks off of social media having a break um it just gives you clarity about things that you can fill that time with um and but then you just learn how to use it in healthy ways i had to learn like okay before i click on this why am i clicking on this am i clicking on this for a particular reason or because i'm avoiding something um, or looking for something to make me feel good or that i think is going to make me feel good so i just uh, i mean probably i have the phone or the apps on my phone on 50 percent of the time and the other half like they're just literally deleted off my phone um or just turning my entire phone off that's like been my new favorite thing yeah. that i didn't for some reason i thought like you couldn't do that like you can't turn your phone off like you have to be available all the time and that's lies from the devil um you can literally just turn your phone off not just put it in the other room turn it off and yeah. it's like a weight like a literal like weight of not even the temptation to go click it on because i'm like oh well, now i gotta wait the five seconds to wait for it to turn on and during that five seconds i realize i shouldn't be turning it on anyway so yeah you probably give your phone to your kid too I, um, oh yes the struggle the struggle <laughs> it really is so that's Generally, my relationship with social media now, um, it's a love-hate relationship, but we're going to talk about how it can be a love-hate relationship and not just a hate. Yeah. 
I think love-hate relationship is a great way to describe it. Yeah. And it's weird because uh, my role deals with that. My name's Connor Wood. I'm the online campus pastor here at Eastview. Um, I hang around normal for the most part. I am excited to visit Bloomington and just to get to know more about what that's like. <laughs> uh, it's a cool part of our, our church. Um, I started engaging with social media with MySpace as well. That was my first, my first run at it. Um, I didn't like manage it much, like I wasn't on it that long. Um, I quickly went to Facebook. I do confess, I think I did lie about my age. Ooh, I did. Confession. I did. It was, just, it was the cool place to be. It was. I quickly went to Instagram, and I think that's kind of where I hit my stride. You know, was averaging you know 50 followers or so. You know. Yes. It was climbing. <laughs> it was climbing. But uh, yeah, it was early on when you literally only had a picture. That was it. No stories. Wow. No, nothing else. <laughs> just. <laughs> Just Instagram. Um, yeah, so what's interesting about my job is I now live in social media world. Yeah. And coming into it, I didn't know how I'd feel about that. Um, I didn't know if it would be uh, consuming because I felt like I'd have to be managing all the time. Mm. But kind of the way that I, I guess my current relationship with social media, it's a tool, right? Yeah. And so I don't know if everyone has the same kind of like tendencies to have uh, boundaries, like you said, you have to find a way to figure out how to c cut it off. Yep. For me, I'm kind of working with it in, on and off so much that I think I've just developed a resistance to be able to just shut it down. Mm -hmm. So it's a tool. That's awesome. Now, I would say you were talking about, man, I just need to like be done with this. One thing I do that's been really helpful is I put it on airplane mode at night. Oh. Because one of my jobs is to oversee the, the main Eastview account, you know, notifications are happening all the time. I have to go to airplane mode, otherwise my phone will light up all night long. I don't so, even know what airplane mode does. I thought you had to be on an airplane. <laughs> you, I mean, is that what it literally that just turns off all your notifications? It, it cuts off all the internet, so oh, no Wi-Fi. I guess you can use Wi-Fi with it, but okay. if right. you cut it off, no one can call you. Really? It's kind of like do not yeah. disturb. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a quick way because he's on oh, Apple, on an iPhone at least. Swipe down, airplane, yep. snooze. Quick way. I love that. That's sweet. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, for me, I also started with MySpace and I Look at this. Yes. Look at stayed this. up way too late, like oh curating it for the very first time. And oh then I ended up like grounded from it for like a week because I stayed up too late. So well, also back then, it cost to be on the internet. Yeah. So like each minute, like if you were up late on the internet, it cost your parents a pretty penny. So that might have been why you were in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. So uh, then I did Facebook, um, Instagram, all of that. I actually, my like small claim to fame is I downloaded Snapchat the like first month it came out. Really? There was only two other people on Snapchat that I knew at the time. Wow. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> I don't think, I used to be like really proud of that, but now I'm like, that's not really. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can Snapchat to other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. yeah. So, uh, one of the things that is our heart behind this video and things like that is um, media and technology, we tend to like want to put it in this place of it's either good or bad. And the reality is it's never going away. And so we shouldn't put it in this good or bad category, but really think about how we're harnessing it, how we're using it, how we're consuming it and all of that. And so um, something I think about in Colossians 3, it talks about fixing our eyes on Jesus. So what do you guys think it looks like to fix our eyes on Jesus when our world is so saturated with media and technology and screens and all of that? Yeah, so what I think about is not just like, do I see Jesus on social media? Not all the time. Like most of us would probably say that there's a lot of difficult things, mm -hmm. bad things that take place, cyberbullying, you name it. Mm -hmm. But one thing I'm encouraged by and that keeps me motivated with social media is I wanna be where people are, right? So I think about John 4, Jesus is at the well and there's a woman there getting water. No one else would wanna be there and it was kind of one of those places where you're like, if you're there in the middle of the day, like just, it looks bad and it comes with a lot of, uh, negative connotations well jesus was there anyway and so i think about the same way with social media we don't always want to be there mm -hmm. it's a place that uh tension happens uh again cyberbullying negative things happen yet if jesus can be where um he doesn't always want to be i think we can make the mm -hmm. same kind of sacrifices mm -hmm. in social media that is a really beautiful way to tie 
a piece of the Bible into social media. I've never I, heard I, it. I love it. That was yeah. great. Yeah. But I feel like the word that sticks out to me with you saying it and Felicia is that you fix your eyes on Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the way that you approach social media is that you are fixing your eyes on Instagram or whatever social media with purpose. I know yep. um, Jason Smith, if you know him, he's the real deal. But he is my boss for Eastview Kids. And he always talks about how uh, you're never going to drift in the right direction. And I think oftentimes we drift when it comes to social media. Like we are not hopping on Instagram with fixing our eyes on what we're doing, but we're just drifting. Like, and when you drift and you're just scrolling and finding yourself on who knows what page and making what comments and reading into things that you shouldn't, you're drifting. And when you drift, you drift in the wrong direction and you're using it for the things you shouldn't. So I think the word in that verse and what you were talking about, Connor, is fixing your eyes, and that's intention. I think fit, when you fix on something, it comes with intention and purpose. I think that's the whole way that you use social media for good, is that you are being purposeful with it and not just drifting in it. Yeah, so what do you guys think that looks like? Do you have any tips? Oh, man. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great question. Social media is also changing so much. Yeah. Like. I always say there's a there's a ten year old in their basement, their parents' basement that's developing the new Snapchat, the new mm. Instagram, the new Facebook, and so I don't know what it looks like, like in big picture down the road, but I think for right now, um, I think we got to be guarded. Mm. Like I think of the the verse that comes to mind, or maybe not the verse, but just this this idea of like be careful what you're looking at, be mm. careful what you're intaking information wise, mm-hmm. uh, because everything that you see. It's just so, everything that's visual, just it, it sticks with you. It sticks with you so much more than words stick with you. And because social media and scrolling is so addictive um, and is so, mm. um, and because you can do it anytime you have a free moment, mm-hmm. uh, barriers, boundaries are so crucial. Mm. Um, and that sounds more defensive than I like it to be. Like when you're talking about fixing your eyes on Jesus, that's like playing defensive. So I think that's one piece of it, but playing offensively man, just be an encouragement. Mm. One of my favorite things about social media is being encouraged by an influencer who has a positive influence. Like Mm. my wife, she follows a lot of positive people. She knows way more about their life (laughs) than she probably should. (laughs) And so, you know, love you, baby. But (laughs) like, if it's someone who's positive and you're following them, like follow people who are encouraging, Mm. not people who are negative. Mm. Because if you're taking in negative visuals, negative information, uh, negative people, just like in real life, but on social media, like it's gonna bring you down. It's gonna put you in a bad place. Mm-hmm. So follow positive people. Yeah, something that I think about is on that of like um, we hear a lot is that you are a lot like the five people you're around, or mm. um, that you should have like. I also think of like a lot of times through being a student pastor, a, a student is one person away from being a success story Hmm. and things like that and so i also think that applies to social media on some level of like we need to be careful of what we're intaking not just on social media but screens in general like what music are we listening Mm. to what movies are we watching who are we following i regularly go through my list and i'm like you know i don't know this person anymore (laughs) or this person is negative all the time and so and i also think through that lens when i'm posting i don't want to always be that like positive and bubbly person because that's not who I am in real life like I'm a balance of that Mm. and honestly some of my friends would probably think that I'm a roller coaster all the time and so I think that like I want to share both like the positive sides of things happening Mm. share like things that I'm learning but also be real so I think about like in January like I love watching those like year-end recaps and stuff and I also participate in those and so I shared a lot of fun moments from 2020 but I also followed it up with like 2020 was really hard and I cried a lot Mm -hmm. and that's not fun Mm -mm. but like I've learned a lot too and so like I want to share both the real and and the positive and so I think through that lens but I also don't want to be negative on there like I want I want people to enjoy following me not just because of me but because I could possibly point them to Jesus through that Y'all just took the good stuff and leaving (laughs) me to come up with something something pulling a little diamond from the rough here no all I was going to say is when I think about it is just not only following like you, I mean, kind of just a collaboration of what you guys said, but not just following people who are positive, but like being that positive person. Mm-hmm. Like, I think you don't realize how much it can mean to somebody. Um, if you're going to comment or like, like 
doing it in an encouraging and informative way and knowing like also why you're posting the things that you're posting like before you post a picture of yourself it can be exhausting at first to constantly be questioning why you're doing something and it's also really uncomfortable because you and god are the only people that you can't fool when it comes to your heart motives i can, i mean i can fool myself more than i can fool god i can justify all day long like oh i'm, I'm posting this picture because like blah, 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 blah. But really at the end of the day, it's because I'm feeling down and I want some people to like, like it and make me feel better about myself. Mm. And at the end of that day is that's not healthy, <laughs> you know? Like, so I feel like it's a lot of the heart issues. You start to really realize who you are and how much you are in God and how much you trust in him and you're looking for him to fill your life. Um, when you're just thinking about why you're posting something, why you're commenting on something, why you're 50, uh, layers deep into <laughs> someone's personal life of like why are you doing those things and you learn a lot about yourself and you can hear a lot of God speaking into you when you're just thinking through the intention about everything that you're doing yeah, yeah uh, something else is um, something to think about maybe is on social media you guys are able to reach and talk to not just on social media but you guys in general are able to reach people that us as Eastview is never going to be able to reach because we can't be in your schools or on your platforms the way that you are. Mm -hmm. You're interacting with students that honestly we don't know exist. Mm -hmm. And so you can use your platform as a way to draw people to Jesus or um, use like platform on social media technology, any of that kind of stuff, but also in your schools. And so I wanna encourage you to think through what it looks like in your life to just point people to Jesus. Mm. Um, and we can do that through social media and technology, which I think we forget about sometimes. Um, because people might ask why you don't listen to certain music or you don't watch certain movies or you don't follow certain people on social media or why you post the Bible verse mm -hmm. or whatever that is. Like you can use that for a really good way and reach people that frankly, like we can't reach. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I uh, do you guys have any like last minute or final thoughts for them encouragement as they navigate screens and all of that yeah i've got kind of like a charge for mm -hmm. the next generation yeah. okay mm -hmm. so what i would love to see in the next 10 20 years right mm -hmm. when the middle schoolers sorry junior hires and high schoolers are like legitimate like 18 to 20 18 to 30 year old adults i would love to see your generation be the generation that ends cyberbullying I would love to see this generation be the people that aren't going to argue over petty stuff on any social media platform, whether it's political, whether it's a hot button topic, no matter what, like arguments, any disagreements should never happen in a public, public setting that social media creates. And so um, that's the charge to you all. Yeah, I think y'all need to fix, I feel like what our generation yep. did wrong. Like yep. I feel like we were overwhelmed by it. Mm -hmm without any experience that came. So let us be, you know, the guinea pigs, whatever you want to call it, yeah. that did it not well, that it kind of got to a place where everybody now can admit like that there's some bad stuff that's come from social media. Like learn from what we've done. We'll, we'll stand here and admit there's things that we've done that have not turned out the way that we thought that they were going to. And take just take ownership of it and make it something meaningful and purposeful in your life instead of just another outlet to get away from your family or to check out of a situation and just decide why you want to use it and how to use it for Jesus. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Connor and Cammie, for joining us. We hope you have a great week. Feel free to DM us or anything if you have questions or whatever this looks like for you. We can help you navigate these conversations.